Hello and welcome to Behind the Walls. During the course of this series, we'll be diving into the hardworking wall assemblies of builders and contractors nationwide and showing how they're utilizing rock wool in their builds. Join me as we go Behind the Walls. So today on Behind the Walls, I'm here in Prairie Village, Kansas with co-founders of Catalyst Construction, Joe and Travis. So guys, what got you into high performance building in the Midwest? Well, we formed Catalyst Construction in 2008, um, kind of formed it when the economy was in a recession. And uh, primarily at that time we were remodeling and taking mostly kitchens, bathrooms, additions, whatever work was coming our way. And kind of after we got our feet underneath us, we uh, started thinking about how can we do this better. And that's when we brought in products like Rockwool. It became just readily available at your local box store. Started paying attention more to caulking, air sealing, and just overall the better building of the house. We sort of uh learned a little bit more and more as the years went by on uh, performance and durability. Uh, it wasn't so much client driven, like the, the energy in the Midwest is pretty inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So we, we generally would be selling comfort more so than performance. And that's really been, uh, I think the greatest benefit for our clients. They notice the comfort more than they're worried about their bill. So the more that we've learned, uh, it just kind of creates a responsibility to then take the next step and there's a, there's a great community of builders out there that are sharing uh, air sealing details, high performance building solutions in terms of products and also uh, practices. So we've just tried to implement whatever the next thing is that we can make it better for our clients in terms of durability and comfort. And, uh, and then when it's cost, and cost competitive, that's a win for everyone too. Awesome. Well, I say we go into the house and we look behind your walls. <laughs> All right, so you guys came a long way. You guys are using a lot more, you know, rock wool comfort bat inside of your wall cavities. So, you know, some of the traits are, you know, we talked about fire, water, sound, um, but one of the, what's the one characteristic that you guys really liked, you know, working with the, with the material? Well, when we first started uh, Catalyst, we were self-performing most of our work. So one of the things I liked about it most when we first tried it was ease of installation. Um, you cut it once, cut it a little bit larger and it fits right in there. And then it's a one step process. It also is, you know, compared to fiberglass bats, a superior performer and you don't have to do the stapling. So, you know, an example, say we had to, there was a box right here and we had to fix a wiring issue. You just pull this piece out, address your wiring and put it right back in. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, that's what I liked about it personally. The, Joe's absolutely right. That was the main thing that drew us to it is the first time we used it, it was, oh, I'm not sure I need the dust mask. You know, like the room isn't full of, eye bleedingly but we small do particles. recommend I understand I'm not saying no one should be safe <laughs> we However, do recommend <laughs> I would encourage people to uh, to note the difference when they use this product versus the fiberglass because like Joe said we self performed so our first jobs we were putting our 15 uh, excuse me our 13 fiberglass uh, paper faced and staple it up the rooms a cloud of tiny glass shards that you're breathing in uh, getting in your eyes with this product, you have so much less dust in the air uh, that you can, you can pretty much do a room like this without eye protection for comfort. You shouldn't, you should always be very safe. However, if it's gonna hang in the air for two hours like it does after a fiberglass right. install, yeah. that's pretty irritating. Mm -hmm. This is nice because you cut it, install it, and then that's kind of the end of the installation. 
there's not a, a long period of let the let the room die down, vacuum it out. Right. Five minutes with the broom and the job's ready. So and with just the heavier nature of rock, it's gonna any fibers that do get in the air, they're on the ground in seconds. Yeah. The other thing that we've talked about uh, privately is that uh, people talk a lot about sustainability and the the green aspects of what we do. And as remodelers first, before we started building a lot of new homes, we like to think about, well, what happens when someone has to take this out of the wall? So if you've got a blown fiberglass or a cellulose even product in your wall, when you open that wall up, gathering that product up to blow it back in the wall, it's not really happening. Yeah. But we have had clients make changes before we were finished with a job, you know, we're drywalled and done. Like, oh, we would really like to add a door here because it's gonna change the flow of the space. I can take that bat out, I can use it in the other wall. There's no, there's nothing wrong with the bat. It's gonna be that way a hundred years from now. So that's a really nice feature when you start thinking about your kids and the stuff that they're gonna be dealing with this. There is no a way to throw things to. So everything that's here, we need to use. All right, so we're in the basement and just wanted to kind of go over what's your basement strategy and what, what are we really insulating from when you're below grade? We're typically figuring a ground temperature of about 55 degrees here uh, year round. So we have more heating degree days than cooling here in Kansas City area. So we're trying to keep the cold out. And uh, one of the nice things about the Rockwell product is that we generally don't have to detail things any differently because again, we're vapor open. So even though we've done a good job of sealing the concrete from moisture on the exterior, we always have to worry about, you know, the footing, uh, you know, cause we didn't do a, a break at the top of the footing, the bottom of the wall. So there is a potential for rising damp. Uh, also it's a walkout basement. The sill could leak. You could get water in your basement a number of different ways. Sump pump could fail. Battery backup could fail. So we plan for the worst. The, uh, the vapor open nature of the mineral wool bat makes it a durable product in a basement application. What I like about this is we typically will hold our framing off the wall just so we can have that air break between the concrete and the studs. But with the nature of the rock wool, we can push that all the way against the concrete because so we don't have to worry about it getting wet or uh, transmitting that moisture into our sheetrock. So, and because the, the stone wool is actually naturally hydrophobic, mostly from the sheer density of it, plus the oil-based binder that we do apply to the strands of fiber, it's actually gonna shed moisture. So even if it does get wet, there's zero chance of mold or mildew on the bat itself. Yeah. Yeah. So in the event of like a basement flood, you know, you get six, seven inches of water in a conventional basement with that conventional insulation, it's gonna wick up through that wall so with this, all we recommend is actually cutting away that however high the water yep. depth came and actually removing the drywall and then just letting it air dry for a couple of days and then patching up the drywall again. So it's a lot less uh, invasive. Invasive. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. more forgiving too. Um, mm -hmm. Might put some insurance companies out of business. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> yeah. So we use the, the comfort board product a lot in our conditioned crawl spaces. So you can imagine those don't get sheathing on that floor system right away. They're not kept dry. Right. So uh, we actually did a, a little bit with Joe just a couple days ago where he was showing a section of uh, scrap comfort board that he held up that had been you know sitting in water mm -hmm. and you can just watch it shed the water right out of it. He gave a little squeeze and it's basically as dry at the top as it is at the bottom. Yeah. So what you're saying in the science world right. holds true in the field. Right. Yeah. Well, and then let's talk sub slab. And that's one of the things that, you know, concrete, Joe, what's the R value of concrete? Oh, <laughs> like R1 <laughs> per foot. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not gracious. great. So, and it's not just, um, you know, the heat, everybody thinks heat rises. So that's our issue, but really it's heat going to cold. Yes. So it's not necessarily going up. It's actually going to where it's colder. Yeah. And the load on your furnace to control the temperature of the concrete. Mm -hmm. On this particular project, we use the Comfort Board 80 and we're thinking that it's going to take the pressure off of the heating and cooling system about 15 degrees or so. And uh, so we're really excited to see how long-term how it works. 
So below grade, what's your assembly that you went with, starting at like the gravel? Yeah, it's gravel. Uh, we put down the Comfort Board 80. We cut it snug to fit. And then our concrete guy puts a uh, poly plastic over it, and then we pour the concrete. And then you also did another project that you had a rough stone foundation. Mm -hmm. And how did that go with cutting? Uh, went great. Uh, Travis did most of that. I was uh, kind of bringing him the boards, but... Uh, I don't it's know, one of the unique it, benefits of the product. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you can scribe to fit and the resiliency of the material itself as you push it uh, into the stone, it only has a little bit of give. So you can scribe it the way you would as a trim carpenter uh, against an irregular surface. And that's something you just couldn't really do with another product, I don't think. Maybe XPS, maybe EPS, you'd have a white yeah. rain all around you of beads. Mm -hmm. And we were able to make this a foam-free assembly uh, yeah. because we were using the mineral wool. Well, and even to touch um, on scribing it to the rock, it didn't have to be perfect because you did have the give. And so right. it, the rock wool itself even filled those voids mm -hmm. a little bit, you know. So what's the speed? You know, how fast is it when you're talking sub slab insulation? Like what's, what's the cost or what's the labor aspect of that? Well, I always defer to Joe on the numbers side for, for cost savings. He's our, he's our numbers man. But I will tell you that as the labor in that application, uh, we were about an hour to get the material from the curb to the foundation where we would, where we would install it. So we were, you know, mise en place, had to get everything set up and ready. And then it was maybe for about 500 square feet, about an hour, hour and 10. Uh, and you're, you're just laying them down and buttoning them together. The friction fit that you get in the cavity is very similar uh, on the ground. You want it tightly pressed against the other sheet. Uh, and as you basically build the brickwork across or tile work, however you want to look at it for under slab, it's immediately discernible that it's a, a durable, uh, condition for your concrete crew to walk on as they place the concrete, as they place the steel, because you don't sink into it. It's dense enough that it supports, you know, 210 of point load, point load, point load, point. I wasn't wearing heels that day, but we, uh, <laughs> we were able to get through the foundation in, I would say, a faster period of time than if we were using a, a sheet foam product because it's windy out here. And if you ever yeah. pick up a sheet of foam, yep. you know it splits in the middle as soon as the wind hits it. And you're going, or you're going with it. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah, the time saving for us was the cuts. Right. Um, all our cuts went really quick. You can, with foam, it has to be really exact. If anything's out of square, you're going to be fighting it and chasing it. With the rock wool, you just cut it, usually an eighth to a quarter, oversized, and it just pressure fits. Everything's sealed. Um, it just really worked well in that assembly. All right, so Travis, we're outside, and I want to just understand some of your transitions. Out earlier in the introduction, you were discussing about, you know, kind of progression. Yeah. And I think a big one is just air sealing, and you know, some of the transitions so, that are going to be some of the issue areas. So what what did you do on this project here? So because we were using the Zip R sheathing product with the poly ISO on the back, uh, we wanted to figure out a way to keep this bottom edge durable, and. Uh, like a lot of our details, they're not all our brainchild. We've got a lot of great colleagues in the industry that are happy to share these things. So we're starting at the top of the wall with the off-the-box store shelf sill gasket, the mm -hmm. crummy foam that really doesn't do a particularly good job unless your top of wall is glass smooth. So what we do is we like to lay down two beads of sealant, one on either side of the anchor bolts, and then press our sill gasket into that sealant so we know that we have a positive air block there. Then we do another bead on top of that sill gasket all the way up the middle on the bolts, basically on the bolt line. So that way you end up going around each bolt. So you really have kind of belt and suspenders. And some guys just do one bead on the outside and one on the top on the inside. You can do it a lot of different ways. The sealant's inexpensive. That's our starting point. Then instead of using the two by six plate that would normally match this two by six wall, we wanted to make a durable detail on the bottom edge for the poly ISO to be protected. And so we used a two by eight in that location. So we've got the two by eight sticking outboard of the wall. You can see this overhang here. And that protects the bottom edge of the poly ISO cyanurate backing the zip R from pests. Uh, air control then is very simple because we've already sealed the plate to the top of wall. Now we can just tape this joint, no primer, 
no complex detail. The same material and procedure the framer is using at this location mm -hmm. is the same material and procedure he's using at this location. And that's just a way for us to eliminate questions and problems, keep it real simple for the guys and everybody keeps it moving. And then how about when you maybe if you let's say did like a comfort port 80 could you yeah. still use the two by eight oh for sure there? yeah that's a great idea because honestly i think i mentioned earlier we do have pests in this market we're, mm -hmm. we're worried about termites we're worried about mice anything mm -hmm. that wants in the nice warm house that we built yep that's a spot for it to get in if we don't have some sort of rigid protection uh, I mean, guys will do metal flashing detail, but this is about as stone simple as it gets. Mm -hmm. So with the air seal created, uh, again, from top of wall to plate, and then transitioning from plate to sheathing or whatever your preferred uh, air barrier strategy is, uh, obviously if we were doing comfort board 80 on the outside, our air barrier would be inboard of that. Right. And so then by having that shelf in place, that gives us, again, we tape to the wood if we're using a, an air barrier that requires taping, which most of them do, some sort of sealing, unless you do a fluid applied, which that'd be a great combination, a little mm -hmm. Prosico on the wall, comfort board over the top, that shelf would make installation even faster. Right. So it's really, it's a winning detail for us. Yeah. So Joe, let's look at other transitions that we have around the house. So one of them is the top plate detail. So what, can you explain what you're doing up top with the, uh, with the Advantech up there? Yeah, uh, this is a detail that uh, we were given to or it was shared with us by uh, Jake Bruton and Steve Basic. Um, this uh, three quarter inch of Advantech up here, it is uh, taped onto our zip bar. So this zip goes up in between this layer here and this up here, this is sandwiched in between and it's taped on the outside mm -hmm. and the tape is rolled in onto the top of this three quarter inch piece of Advantech. We tape the seams and that is kind of wrapping our air barrier into our envelope. The ceiling here is gonna be attic. So then we'll do furring strips and that will plane out with our Advantech. And then we'll use some acoustical sealant along this perimeter to even kind of belt and suspenders our air barrier. And that gets our sheetrock as our air barrier. Right, and then you're still gonna have your insulation on the interior, and that's gonna ultimately be continuous between this bat insulation yes. and then your exterior board insulation as well. Correct, and then the, yeah, the interior, the rock wool here will come up and then it'll just go right across the lid. Awesome, and, and another detail that I see that you guys are doing is your header. Mm -hmm. Can you ex talk a little bit about what you're yeah, doing? Yeah, where we can, we're gonna value engineer, and uh, yeah, if in some places we're using a little bit too much lumber, but we're working through that process with our framer. But yeah, we only needed this size one single header here, and this will allow us to put insulation in this cavity Mm -hmm. thus reducing our thermal transfer. Travis and Joe, thank you so much for having me part of your, your project here today. It's gonna to be a beautiful home. Thank you everybody for joining. Until next time, rock on.